our problem to pass that data, to manage that data, and do all the work. Um, okay, why should we clean? We're going to feed the data to an application, to a service. Uh, the data should be structured, uniform, accurate and complete. Most of the time, we don't have any of them. Some of the time, we can manage to structure it better, uh, make it more uniform, uh, make, for example, more complete. Maybe the data set doesn't have everything, but if we have one data set, of addresses and with another data set of numbers of string or whatever. You can match them and create one with everything. And you make a data set that is complete. And if you make a new data set, please share it with everyone because maybe the data set is going to be helpful to another, to another person. Maybe you're lucky that maybe your data set is already structured, uniform, accurate, and complete. Then you don't have to anything this time. Uh, how should you continue? Uh, obviously, if it's small data set, you can do manually. You can do you can change the units manually. You can uh, check that all the addresses are more or less the same, correct, uh, written. Um, if there's no hidden pages, there's going to be a negative page. So you know there's a problem, so you can change that. Uh, for example, the following the rules of the, the service you're using. When you're going to do plotting data, I know. Okay? And the service you are using needs longitude and latitude of the point, not the address. So you have to convert the address to the longitude and latitude points. There are services and tools that help you do that. You don't have to do it manually. But also you can't. Like there's not much more data. Um, adding extra information, uh, you know, I just said. Or el eliminating non relevant information. The, the Justice City Police Department, you know, they have out of cost everything, all the cost. As I said before, you're interested in the, in the noise complaint. So you just remove everything else, and instead of having 4,000 rows, I think it is or even more, you have you end up with 400. Oh, 400 is an unmanageable amount of data. And again, if you create a new data set, share it with everyone. Maybe someone takes your noise complaints and mix it with another data, and creates a bigger one, and also share it. And now, he was going to explain the tools and how to use them. And again, if uh, we'll be around here, if you have any question, if you need to clean data and you know how, ask us and we'll help you. Thank you. Okay. My name is Sharad Hekte. A robot to here explained us what data is, what this what is the clean data, why the data should be clean. And now here we are going to cover, cover how we are going to clean our data. Okay? We're going to talk about two tools that are, the first one is very powerful. Instead of taking the data and putting it into an Excel sheet and doing a find replace, you know, finding all the errors and doing find replace is a very cumbersome process. And especially if you have the data running to a million rows, Using, you know, breaking it up into multiple Excel sheets and working on them is very cumbersome and very terrible. So Google came up with this tool called Google Refine, now called Open Refine, which is all in the open domain, free to use tool. It's a desktop tool that you can use. Plug in your data in there, then you can change it the way you want. So we will do a quick
So you can take
So this allows us to basically change anything on the bottom. If we want to edit the whole cell, edit the whole columns, move the columns around from the front to the back, and all of that. That goes back to what Robert was talking about, restructuring data, cleaning data. So let's suppose one of the 20 of these 10,000 words were not called Jersey City, but called JC, or the Jersey was spelled wrong, or the case, lowercase, uppercase was an issue. All these can be e easily changed with just one click of a button using this tool. So you can take a, a data set with a million rows and quickly format it, quickly cluster it using this. And it's a very, very powerful tool, powerful tool which is freely available, runs on your desktop, and you can take your data, you know, even if it's a private data, you can go in and manipulate the data and pretty much you know, clean it up before you load it to some uh, common source. Another one that uh, is pretty interesting is this one by Stanford University. It's called the Data Random. Uh, it was very successful and got a lot of good reviews and they went on to create a commercial product based upon the same. you must have scraped from some kind of a sheet or uh, scanned from a document using OCR, which is non-formatted non in a tabular format, you can just paste it out in the upload in here, and then you say random, it converts it into a tabular structure. So for example, here it converts it into a tabular structure. You put the column, other names in it. And what it does is after you do this, you can export the script which created this data. So it automatically creates a script on which, which has been created automatically to convert the data. So you can download that script from their website and run it locally. Alternatively, of course, you can download the finished product as well. So typically what people use to do this is if you have a sample of your unclean data, Take that sample, cut paste in here, okay? You run this uh, Wrangler code and it generates a code. Then you download the code onto your machine and you can run your code, that code, that script onto whatever million records that you have and it'll clean it up for you. It'll at least structure it, it's more about structuring. Usually the output of this is not the final output, so the best way is to use this as a first stage and then shake that data and use Google Refine to do your next stage of refinement. So these are the two tools which are very effective in cleaning data and get the data into what Robert was talking about. A structured format, a uniform format, less errors and uh, more complete. Going back to our presentation. So we'll also talk about you know, how we can visualize and convert data into charts. So what can we do with data? So he talked about a lot of data, showed us several websites that can give us data from New Jersey City, data from New Jersey, but what would we do with that? So we will talk about some of the things that we can do. So clean data can be displayed as charts to make better sense. Right, so that it makes, it's, you know, as we all know, you know, with all the BI tools that we use, when we take the data which is in a tabular form and convert it into a visual form, it becomes a 
very consumable form of data. Some people can people can quickly arrive at conclusions or quickly understand the impact of that data. So visualizing and converting data into charts is one of the most efficient ways of moving data. So these charts can then be published in blogs and website, etc., to tell a story. So we'll look at some of the uh, tools that we use. So New York, uh, New York City, Chicago, City of Chicago, all have put their data into a platform called Socrata. And as he showed us, even New Jersey's data is in the Socrata. So that, this is the data set that we talked about, is this pensioner's data set, right? These, this list, each and every, this is, a, there are two data sets here. One is an aggregated data set re relating to pension employees, and the other one is actual individual pensioners of New Jersey. So you see the employer name, the location code, the, you know, the company that they work for, whether they're veteran or not veteran, Current employer, what was their salary, etc. Now we could take this in Socrata and do some simple stuff. Let's say we want to filter it. So we can filter it by, let's say, let's say look at, let's choose a choose a column called veteran status. Let's say veteran status is say non-veteran. If we click it, it filters the data and shows us a subset of the data. Let's add another filter. Let's say the current salary is, current employer salary amount is greater than 50,000. So this is the way you can filter the data like as if it was an Excel sheet and maybe download only the data set that you really want. You can also take and write at that website, go and say, I want to visualize that data. So my birth year and not be the best example, but you get the point. We can take the data right at that website and create different kinds of charts, choose the columns you want, and create visuals out of it. Those visuals can be then be embedded in another blog site, into your PowerPoints, wherever it is. Any questions? So similarly, we have data sets. There are different kinds of data sets that we can use. One of the websites called, there's a website called Quandle. Quandle is, is an app store for data. Imagine an Apple app store where you can write an app and you put it out there for 99 cents, right? And if you get a million downloads, Apple gives you 70% of what it makes. Similarly on Quandle, you can create a data set and put it out there and say that I want to charge $10 a month for this data. What Quandle does is they will keep 30% of it and provide you the rest of the 70% of the revenue from that data is passed on to you. But Quandle also has open and free data sets that have been contributed by individual users like us. They created data sets and just put it out there for public consumption. And there are also governments that are contributing data sets out here. So you have all kinds of data sets in there. So this one I'm looking at is, let's say, 
we are percentage overweight male by country. So we're clicking at US because we do have an obesity problem and it visualizes itself in terms of a chart. But what's more is you can export that data using CSV, download it for your own consumption. You can also directly export it into other charting tools like there's one charting tool that I like is Plotly. This is also an, it's a cloud-based open charting tool. It does have enough free tier that you can use. And you can choose stuff like this and say, okay, I want to do a line plot. Similar to what, what, what we saw over here. So there are different websites, you can do different kinds of plotting. So we can convert that into a bar chart like this. So Plotly has like a dozens of different free charts available. It has a free tier, you can create an account there and on Plotly import your data either directly from Quantum or if you have it in a CSV format you can upload it to Plotly and create charts. Then you can embed this chart into your blog posts, into your PowerPoints, wherever you want, into your Microsoft documents, etc. Would you like to see, I don't know how many people are familiar with uh, SQL, would you like to dive into this place where you actually upload files into Google's database, free database and run queries on it? Okay. So, okay, take a quick look into it. So Google has a database called Google BigQuery. It also has a free tier in the sense if you have a Gmail account, you get a free tier of database. It is a terabyte big database. You can upload millions and millions of rows into big, big Google BigQuery. Millions or trillions of rows into big Google BigQuery. It is much more powerful than Google spreadsheets or anything. Then you can analyze this data using a standard query language or SQL. Okay. Then this can also, the Google BigQuery has an easy interface into almost all of the data analysis tools uh, in the free space as well as in the paid space. In the paid space you have like, you know, high-end data analysis tool like Tableau, uh, which is quick. So all these tools have interfaces into BigQuery. You can directly plug these tools into BigQuery.
So what we have done is we have uploaded the CSV file called the JCPD, the police data, the 911 call data into, into the Google Big Web. So if we run this query, for example, if we, this is nothing but a calendar. You could run a query out here. So we'll filter the data out of here. You can then do by saying this way. So here you'll get the count of the gunshots by the strip. In that, this is the data set for 2015, uh, January and February. So you're getting all gunshot calls for gunshots across this district for the month of January and February that I got in the district. 39 calls from west, 55 from south, 30, 30 from the east, and 9 from the north. So you can basically filter and massage it out once you upload it into the Google database. Any questions? All right. Thank you. We'll, I think John will continue with the next set of presentations. Lunch is actually here now. We're going to make a slight adjustment and we're going to take a break for lunch. Um, so that is served and we will be at the, the back of the food is there and we'll the tables outside.